for it. Um, there we go. Recording is in progress. All right. Good. Hello, everybody. How are you? I was up on a few seconds late because I wasn't looking carefully at the clock. Mm. Mm. Got to have some coffee, get myself prepared to talk to a whole bunch of really nice people. Watch who's here. Look, everybody is here. Um, we got, uh, let's see here. Well, where where should we start? Let's see who pops in first. Oh, there's Paula. Hello, Paula. And Hello. there's Deutsch, and there's Charlotte Solis, and there is uh, 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 Linda Frisco, and all right, Mandy. Mandy's back at work. And oh, yeah. Hold on, I'm just finishing a call with my parole officer. Just <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, of course, Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. Okay. Hello, Edward. And then That's other right. Other people will join us uh, during this hour. Um, Francine says she can't be with us today. Very nice to write me a note and tell me so. And uh, um, uh, let's. We Mandy's kind of uh, back again this week. You're 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 doing uh, you're, you're taking some kind of a course or something in. Uh, your no, my you know how I teach the fitness classes. Oh yeah, I have a class now. On Mondays at five forty-five. So I literally jump. I like leave maybe even a little bit before five. Yeah, yeah. So I can be up for a little bit. It just work's been crazy too. So sorry. Work's been crazy. Yeah, What's been crazy. Dissipate. What's been crazy about work? It's just. Everybody's quitting. Huh? <laughs> I'm not running anybody off. I promise. Um, we're just down some staff members. I do have oh. an intern helping me though, so that's nice. Well, what happens is when you're down staff members, companies don't have a tendency to put somebody into there to make up for it to make your life easy, right? Well, that yeah. the problem is, is we it's really hard to find accounting people right now. It's a very hard field to fill. I don't know why. Yeah, at least in Atlanta, I don't know, but the boss's daughter happens to be an accounting major, so hey, okay, I've got her working Alex, for me. Yeah, you know. what do you need me to put down here on her attendance report? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to put on my earphones. Uh, turn up your mic a little bit, Andrew. I was just asking what I needed to put down on her attendance report here while I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Okay, we'll let it pass this time. Do you, do you, think, lady. Uh, do you think Trump's going to get a good report from his par parole officer or whoever? <laughs> the only thing that we know for sure is she's he's going to say that the parole officer was horrible, unfair, rigged, and compromised. <laughs> but I had a perfect meeting. It was the most perfect meeting ever. It was perfect. It was a, right. a perfect parole meeting to talk about my criminality. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. He's got it, but he gets to do it virtually. He doesn't have to be there. Yep. I think half of America is going to the lottery, playing the numbers forty-five thirty-five as their uh, four-digit number in the lottery. Forty-fifth mm. president, thirty-five, or what is it? Thirty-four convictions. Thirty-four. <laughs> yeah. 40, yeah, forty-five, 34. thirty-four is my thirty-four. The number. Well, we'll get it right soon, but yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, of that jerk. yeah. So Marjorie went out and bought me a steak for dinner tonight. Uh, and she bought it from a stool and it's a very good place to buy food from. And she orders it. And what did, what did you, did you do something wrong or did they do something? Yes, I didn't put down the, the width, the, the width of it. Oh, you didn't put down the width of it. So they I said it's a two inch steak. <laughs> and I don't eat steak. Yeah. Well, you're going to have to help me. Uh, so, and then I have, as soon as I'm through here, I have to rush into the kitchen before I even post the show or do anything else and throw the uh, thing in the oven. Uh, and it's going to cook for like 25 minutes. Two inches, the Royal. right thickness. Huh? Royal. Two inches is the right thickness for a good steak. <laughs> really? I think so. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a wow. That's a steak steak. <laughs> you you have a cast iron skillet in an oven? I'm not using I'm using an oven, I'm using a broiler. Right, but do you have do you have a cast iron or a, a carbon uh carbon? I, I do have a cast iron, but I, I the reason I don't cook cast iron that much is because 
the smoke that it causes when I'm cooking fills up the entire apartment. You sear the steak right in that, put it in the oven to finish, and you'll be glad you got a two-inch steak. Oh, oh, you mean I should have seared it first? Yeah, sear it on a cast iron and then finish it in the oven. You can find a hundred recipes online. Too late. No, I can I can still sear it. It's just going to take a little bit longer to cook. That's all Marjorie. In fact, when you're when you go in there, find a cast I iron. Have it, I have it set. Go in and get a cast iron skillet and turn it on uh so that I can sear it on either side, or maybe you could even sear it. It's there. I don't cook anymore, Alex. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. retired. Well, have one of your servants do it. <laughs> James and yeah, and so you name? sear it, and that that uh, how what does that do to it? How does that help it? It seals it in, and then you finish it in the oven, and it's it's a delicious steak. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't have a grill to grill it on. That's the best way to cook it. Well, you know, you, Charlie more, from Barbecue Country. What do you think, Charlie? Yeah, <laughs> sounds good to me. It doesn't matter, Marjorie. I'll sear it when I get in there. All yours. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, we barbecue, How long does it take to sear? What? A couple minutes on each side, and then in the other. I asked ask Siri, not you. How long does it take to sear, Siri? <laughs> Just a little joke on my part. Thank you. <laughs> You know, uh, well, we're a little light on people today, but, uh, you know, I did a show last week on Friday and I only had, are you ready for this? Two people there. Yeah. Mm. I have no idea why. Yeah. Do you know why one of us wasn't there? Huh? Do you know why one of us wasn't there? You were doing, uh, you were doing coaching? I with extra crap to do for umpires. For I, I had to do it at 10 o'clock at night. Well, you know, you're a regular and you, you're pretty good about it. So I'm not blaming you, but I'm thinking of stopping that nighttime program, or at least as it is now, because it's just, you know, people aren't going to call. I don't, you know, I mean, we, so you would call, that would be three people call. Yeah. Right. You could have had three. Yeah. Yeah. Normal. Uh, you know, but I mean, it, it's just, it was just very frustrating. I just went, oh my God, you know, is this the end of Rico? You know, <laughs> uh, how are you, how are you doing, Paula? I am doing well. Yeah. Uh, we've had some lovely weather, but not today. Today it is, it's uh, like in the fifties and it's damp and not that great, but we've had like perfect weather. It's been beautiful here. Really? That's wonderful. It's nice. Did you did you say that you went to see Civil War? Well, no. You went. You somebody went out to the movies and saw Civil War. Not no. me. Oh, I thought it was you. Nope. Because I was going to blame you for recommending it. I thought it was a guy. I remember him talking about. It. I thought it was a guy that went. To see really? It. Yeah. Paula just tried to start one. She didn't go see it. <laughs> Uh, it's it's old. I can't remember. It's a pretty weak movie. It's just weak. Good no. idea. Good idea. Weak movie. You know. I said I saw the Fall Guy. Oh, you saw the Fall Guy, right? Yes. You liked it. Yes. You know what I saw? I saw the Hitman on online, and um, they made a big fuss about it. That, that, that there was a lot of of of, uh, of uh, reviews that that uh, made a big fuss about it. Um, it was okay, but, but, um, no, it, it, it reminded me of, of, uh, out of sight or supposed to remind you of, of the movie out of sight, the Elmore Leonard, uh, yeah, right. Movie with, with yeah. George, with George Clooney and, and uh, Jennifer Lopez, which I loved, which was yeah. really worked, but this one did not, it was, it, it, it didn't live up to that at all. It was the last I, time I that was Jennifer good. Lopez was a good actress. Oh yeah, she was in that, and of course, she was George. Very Trump. good. Very yeah, good. they were both good. It was a good movie. Which one? Out of sight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But she was really good in it, and the thing is, I guess you get you're really good in something until the rest of the public catches up to you, and you become a big popular star, and all of a sudden you start making nothing but crappy movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? 
I've never been able to figure that one out. But uh, that's that's fame has its has its faults. Okay, and uh, Len Lafrisco, how, what are you up up to? You know, it's quite a weekend. My wife's brother visited from Florida. We hung out with them. Um, it's going to be ninety eight tomorrow, so hot oh. here. And um, yeah, next weekend is going to be quiet. We're going to Indiana in a week or two to a wedding. You know, just living life, living the dream. You know. Really? Well, I said to Mar Marjorie, you know, we, we want to get out and take vacations and things like that. And I said to Marjorie today, why don't we, why don't you just pick a place you want to go right now? Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll book a flight and go there. Okay. Just do it. You know, just do it. And before we go, before we book the flight, we'll book a hotel. So when we get off the plane, we got somewhere to go. And uh, you know, let's let's do it. I, I I love doing travel agent stuff like that. So if you're seriously, if you need help, cruises, things like that, give me a call. I'll be happy to help you. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's just that you know, I mean, I uh, I'm sick of not getting out of here. Yeah, yeah, just do it. You know what? It just JFDI, just fucking do it. Yes. You know what? <laughs> Yeah. Call us. She's looking for guests. JFDI. You know, I have really learned. I've learned that in the last year of being retired. You know what? We're going to be dead for a really long time, and we might as well start doing some stuff now. You know, <laughs> you can't do it when you're dead. At least I don't. You, you, you can. It's just not as much fun. <laughs> <laughs> flights, flights to Akron or Chief. Go see Paula. Yeah. yeah go. Pick a place you haven't been nice for a while. Oh, yeah. Cleveland, Cleveland is nice this time of year, right? Um, it is. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can smell Akron from here. Well, I mean, we can. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a tire. Bermuda or something. I don't know. That's not very far well, away from here. Uh, it's super nice. I, 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 wanna, I wanna get a, a, a far enough away that I'm not on this continent. Okay. Then uh we'll figure uh, out. Yeah. Do it well, in, Marjorie Marjorie said to me, Marjorie, I said to her, you know, his book of plane to Spain and go to Barcelona. And she goes, nothing during the summer. Everything's crowded during the summer. Well, it's not right nice. now. What? The, Olymp the Olympics are coming up here. The hell. Olympics, yes. Well, yeah. well, that's why you wouldn't go to France. Right, right. Okay. I don't think you want to be anywhere near Europe this summer, to be honest. Yeah, with you. I agree. I agree, Lynn. Yeah. Well, let me see. Where can we go, Marjorie? Alex, can... we'll figure it out. Yeah. It's I, right I, I, in Australia. I, uh, well, no, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> That's a 19 hour flight. Hey. <laughs> One of them is. We see all these things like cruises, you got to make an advance because they just book in advance, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you'll get a room. You'll I mean, could I, if I wanted to book a, a get on a ship right now, could I do it right Absolutely. now? Get on it. Like for, for, for Friday or Saturday? Unlikely. No, but how about, how about it during the weekday? There's no, they don't leave during the weekdays generally. They don't? Usually leave, they usually leave Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get on one of those ships, you know, that's got a, a Ferris wheel. I know. You know, if you went on a Priceline or one of those websites that sells the last minute ones, you could get a discount yeah. and get on a cruise. You, you'd Saturday. find something. You'd, you'd, you'd easily find get something. on a good cruise. Let's check it out. Alex, we'll check it out. Go out awesome. Lib you can go out of Liberty, New Jersey and head south to the, to the Caribbean. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I prefer to go. I would like I really some of the places I would like to visit. I hear Greenland is terrific. Yeah, Iceland is supposed to be Iceland, even right, Iceland rather is even better. Yeah. Iceland. Yeah, Iceland is, yeah. is better. Greenland you don't want to, but Iceland's got a lot of volcanic stuff going on right now. You don't want to go. Oh jeez. Yeah. Sure. I wouldn't go there right now, but it's a great place. Okay, so I got we got a golf volcano. Let's check it out, Alex. Really, I'm gonna go to San Francisco, but there aren't volcanoes, but there's poop in the streets, <laughs> so, you know, and floods, and floods and famine. And is there anywhere in the world where there isn't something terrible going on? Your apartment, probably China. <laughs> oh, You've already been there. <laughs> I love China. Marjorie loved China. Great country. It's yeah. just a shame that we you really can't go there now as an American. It's just yeah. a place to go. A lot yeah. of people are going to Vietnam instead. Vietnam is supposed to be very nice. Yes, I heard that too. You know, they have some nap napalm roasted chicken there that's supposed to be <laughs> really good. Costa Rica is good this time of year. 
By the way, I, I did I did say hello to uh, 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 Edward Berger, didn't I? Right, 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 right. You covered uh, that. Okay, I I just wanted to make sure. I don't. I've know. heard wonderful things about Costa Rica from everyone that's been there. I've been been going there since the 1980s. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be beautiful and and unspoiled and and. I don't know about, don't know about the unspoiled, but it's beautiful yeah. and relatively safe and really interesting things to see. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've heard that too. Well, I kind of have to go somewhere where I don't have to walk that much because my walking is. That's not that's not Costa Rica. No, yeah, it's, it's a walk. kind of place. There's beaches on the on the west and the east. You can go from to the Pacific and the Atlantic on the same day. Well, I've eliminated everything where I can't where I can't yeah. walk far distances, and I think what I have left is New York City. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Poughkeepsie is beautiful this time of year. You know, Mar I said something to Marjorie before I came on the air here. And I got a very unexpected reply from her. I said, the, some horn was honking for 10 minutes, you know, yeah. somebody's car. And she said, I can't, I, she said, that's horrible. I said, I can't stand this town anymore. And she says, neither can I. Uh -huh. And she, I never got that out of her in the past, but you're pretty well, entertaining. well, you're pretty fed up with this town, aren't you? Marjorie? What? Oh, wake up. I, I, said, <laughs> I, I said, you're pretty fed up with this town. Well, you know, yeah. It's, there's nothing to do here. I know yeah. I find that ridiculous, but this town's pretty boring now. I mean, it used to, in the old days, even when you know, when the crime was rampant, it was, it was exciting. You know? It's not exciting anymore. It's just dull. But we've got such great rent here. How can we give that up? That's that's yeah. You have got the golden handcuffs there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, it's really uh, 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 you know, who knows, uh, you know. But but I I could stand. I don't know. I would move out of the city immediately if I, you know, if we were living in a fairly high rent place or something like that. And uh, I mean, we go up, I go to my dentist in Scarsdale and I go, wow, look, trees. Right. Uh, I mean, there are trees here, but they're coughing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but it, 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 you know, we've got to go somewhere. Got to take a trip somewhere. We'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, oh, I could, well, you know, we could go to San Francisco. We have people who will put us up there. You're uh, always welcome out here for sure. What? I said you're always welcome here for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I also can't go anywhere. I got to drive now because I'll tell you, um, I haven't driven in 20 years. I mean, I haven't had a car in 20 years. I haven't driven in about five or six. I don't know if I can drive anymore. Is your license even in force? Oh, absolutely. Okay. It goes till uh, twenty ninety or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, renewed for eight nine years. I think it was Marjorie. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I got I got a new license. I can drive, uh, but I just don't know if I can drive. I think about getting behind the wheel of a car and what's it like on a highway? Ooh, ow, oh, ooh, you know. And before I never yeah. thought twice about it. I got behind the wheel of a car and I it was like a second pair of feet, you know. Try driving in Italy. I, it was that was the most harrowing experience I've ever had in my well, life. I, I drove in Italy, but we didn't have much trouble in Italy driving, did we? No, no. We went up to someone's house by mistake. No, that was because the GPS was a bad <laughs> GPS, or was programmed by some criminals who wanted to get you to go the wrong place. Uh, but no, I found Italy was okay. But where in Italy? That's the question. Yeah, we were in the southern, we we're in the, the Amalfi Coast and Sorrento and Amalfi and Positano. Switchbacks and they're, the, the lanes are only a lane and a half wide, you know, and there's scooters and there's buses. And it's like, Jesus Christ. Uh, I was I, I came out of there like this every afternoon. I, I remember one place in Italy. I was in uh, I was in France and then I dropped down into Italy and then I thought I'd go south. Right. And they had these tunnels that you went mm -hmm. through. But there was like 
a hundred tunnels I seem to have gone through. And yeah. you go through the tunnel and you get a little bit of light and then you get another tunnel, a little bit of light, then you get another tunnel, a little bit of light. And after a while, you're just like, you're, you're going crazy, you know? Yeah. So that, that I didn't like, but I found we were in, um, where were we in, uh, where, where's the, what's the nice place, the nice area? Um, Marjorie? We're in Italy or France? In Italy, in Italy. We were in, uh, well, I, we the were in town, Siena. Singapore? And no, we were in Siena. Siena? Oh, Siena, yeah, we went there. Yeah, and that's in, uh, in the Tuscany. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we were in Tuscany, and the traffic wasn't bad there. And then we drove from Tuscany out to Cinque Terre, which is... Oh, really God. Huh? <laughs> That's the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. The best. Yeah. The best. It's gorgeous. And uh, there's a lot. You take a lot of boats and stuff around there, and you go to various... The, Cinque Terre means five towns, I guess. Yep, yeah, it does. And, and it is just... Uh, we had... We really... We did... This was... We kind of was our ad lib vacation. You know, Marjorie booked us into a hotel in, uh, I can't remember where, and it was terrible. And we didn't mm. want to stay there any longer. And we got in the car and we just started driving on our own. And Marjorie knew somebody had been to Cinque Terre, I think. Yeah. And so we went to Cinque Terre, not having a room or anything pulled up. No, well, they recommended that hotel we stayed at. Oh, really? So we called the hotel or something. And we yeah, made exactly. arrangements and we wound up staying there for, I guess, what, a week, something like that. Yeah. And that's where I have the famous video of you on crutches. <laughs> oh, really? Well, the yeah. vacation started out, she could walk. All right. Then we get to Paris and her leg, her, what do your back start, starts bothering you. By the time we get to Italy, uh, she can barely walk. Then she gets to a point where she can't walk at all, so we have to go get her some crutches. So we went and bought her some crutches, and she had the, the crutches, and she spent the rest of the vacation on crutches until we started going home, and it even got worse. And they got mm. in a wheelchair in the airport, wheeled her. It's great, because they wheel you right through TSA, you know, or through whatever their TSA is. And then we went out to the plane, and they literally put her on something that lifted her up into the plane. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a cherry picker or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Could to get her in the front door? And we got on the plane. We were the only ones in the plane until, you know. So the next time you go, even if you don't have a problem, go on crutches. Because you'll just yeah. zip through everything, you know. That was a great adventure, Marjorie. Yeah. What happened? I mean, what happened with you? If you get a chance and you can go to Roku, it's actually there, the whole video. And it's one of my better videos, too. You know, starts out with me in a rainstorm and then it goes back five days, you know, and things like that. It, really it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, <clears throat> what's the worst vacation you've ever taken, Len? Wow, I don't know that there is a bad vacation. Um, well, there is. I love, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I love cruising. And I love, uh, I'm just starting to get my feet wet and going to Europe. So we're going to do it again over the next few years. Yeah. And continue continue to do that. We want to do Costa Rica. Um, you know, to me, a vacation is not something like Disney. That's just work. You know, when you have kids, you go to Disney. It's too, it's too much. But to me, that's not a vacation. Disneyland, the way. Dis Disneyland is not a vacation. I don't think so. I mean, I think it's just, it's for the kids and you do it for the kids and you're exhausted and I don't know. How many here, have, take, how many here have taken cruises? I am. Yeah, I, I know Mandy has and, and our good friend uh, Edward has. And mm -hmm. do you say you have, Charlie? Yes. And who else? And Paula and... Oh, well, we're the only ones, Marjorie. No, I don't want to do it. You've taken a <laughs> cruise? Too? I've never taken a cruise. Mine Me was a, a shitty cruise. Yeah. I, I got a cruise for sitting through a timeshare, and it was a disaster. And I took it because I wanted oh. my family to not enjoy it, so we'd never have to go on a cruise. And as much as I disliked <laughs> it, they loved it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 
a well, tiny ship. We pull into the port. We look like a pimple on the someone. Our my uh, my uh, oncologist, um, who's keeping me alive, said. Uh, oh. he said we told him. Said, what do you want to do? And I said we're going to go take a trip somewhere. She mm-hmm. says where? We said we haven't figured it out yet. He says whatever you do, do not take Viking. Oh, oh, really? Have you heard have anybody here taken Viking? It's a very small uh, yeah. ship, small ships. They do mostly Europe and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, flat boats, kind of long yeah. boats. Yeah. They do up, they go up rivers rather than yeah. out in the ocean. Yeah. He said they were terrible. He took one. That was oh. Well, I've talked to three different couples that have gone Viking through Europe and they yeah, love it. That's what my wife really? wants to do. She doesn't want to go on a big ship anymore. So Yeah. Well, I'm probably if Marjorie were here, I'd say to her, let's let's relook at uh, Viking. Because Viking yeah, I, has a lot of tours where they say no kids are on that yeah. ship. Oh yeah, there's no kids on those ships, no. No. It's too expensive and it's uh there's nothing for them to do. Well so those that's what I'm are, saying. I don't want to yeah. go on on a, on a ship that has a Ferris wheel, and the reason they have a Ferris wheel is because there are kids on the ship. Viking would be great for you because it not only do you is it a small ship, you have a nice room with a balcony that you watch the world go by. You get dinner every night. You have a, a uh, an excursion every day in every port, and it's all included, you know. And uh, you know, you just you go. Yeah. And if you don't want to go on the excursion, you don't go. But for a first time cruiser or something like that yeah why not yeah yeah i would do it i would do it well i, I, would, probably, I would probably be able to walk better if i had somewhere to walk i think the reason i can't walk anymore is i can't stand walking my neighborhood any longer because i have yeah i have have, have walked every street in my desire to walk sure and, and after a while there's nothing here you know yeah I got yeah. park, I got to park that way. I got to park the other way. I got to park another way. I go to them. How many times can you go to the park? Right. You poor baby. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. I love going to the park. <laughs> you poor baby. Oh, John Ewing said, "Sorry, I couldn't make it today. I have a pleasant, have a pleasant hour." Okay, thank you, John. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it. You know. Uh, there's, there's something going on this time of year where people can't make it exactly. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah, but anyway, so that's that's uh, that's our big deal is trying to figure out where we can go. But I just thought, you know, I'm sick and tired of waiting to try and figure out something. Just get on a goddamn boat and uh, boat. Get on a goddamn uh, plane, airplane, and get there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it is it is problematic if 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 walking is is difficult yeah. to to figure out where to go. Well, but I, a cruise sounds like a wonderful solution. Yeah, a cruise is yeah. a solution to that. So, yeah. you know, and if you if you really really need it and don't be embarrassed by it, you know, you get one of those electric scooter things or whatever yeah. to help you get around. I mean, well, that, you that, it, what it is, it's neuropathy, and the bottom of my feet hurt when I walk. So, I mean, I I keep a cane with me although i don't really use it yeah because i'm afraid of falling but i uh uh you know i mean i can I, I probably if i were out on a vacation you know and i had to like walk through the musée d'orsay museum in paris i could do it you know so it's, it's not stamina it's more pain in your feet okay well then, yeah. yeah 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 so you know um but marjorie's been on a phone call who is she That's right. talking to she yeah, but don't your feet she... hurt whether you're walking or not? What? So don't your feet hurt wh- whether you're walking or not? Uh, they don't hurt as much. When I'm walking, uh, the bottom of them are kind of... Well, before my nerves completely died, it would hurt whether I was walking or not, so I might as well walk. Yeah, that's Ch- Charlie Charlie Fortos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they kept clipping them off one at a time, yeah. right? Right. Marjorie, they all say that Viking is okay, that it's 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 terrific. I haven't heard anything really bad about them. I've, I've no. only heard good things about it. What? I've only heard good things about it. I've never heard negatives about Viking. Yeah, that it's for adults. Well, the adapter. There's, Has anybody the, ever been on 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 the QE two? The, the real big. Uh, the, um, no. uh, too big. Why, why is it too big? What's the matter with that? 
Well, no, the QE2 is not big at all. That's a that's an old no, ship. Sure. Like 4,000 people. How many? Yeah. I was on a cruise that had 10,000 people. Yeah, oh, the, the, new, yeah. the icon of the sea is by Royal Caribbean. There's 10,000 people on it. Yeah. 1,000 people on a ship is not a big problem, Marjorie, because I've I've been told by people, you don't even notice there are 1,000 people. You know? So. No, because no. it's like a floating hotel. As long as yeah. you can't smell them. Yeah, well, that's right. what they really are. You know? <laughs> yeah. But I just, you know, I just want to go somewhere. I want to do it you know we'll figure it out alex and if i have to do a lot of walking i'll i'll manage i'll somehow i'll hold i hang on to you you know and if you're on a cruise ship and you don't feel like walking that day you stay on the damn ship yeah you'll yeah. be fine you know yeah I've, I've often heard that the greatest tour people say they've ever taken the ship tour is the, the alaska uh yeah, I'm still waiting to do that. You know, too. this is a good time of year for that. Yeah, yeah, this is the time of year to do it. Yeah, that it, it that's that's really good. Now you're saying, you go, you're saying ships don't leave on weekdays? Not generally. The the ten day cruises uh, will, they you do. know, but the East seven Coast days ones. go seven yeah. days go Saturday to Saturday or Sunday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, there there are more ten day cruises to do, to do. Yeah, there's some three and four days and some ten and twelve days that will leave in the middle of the week yeah yeah well anyway uh we'll figure out a vacation spot sometime yes. sometime before i die <laughs> you know. yeah that'd be great oh me dying no <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> oh anyway it depends how you do it. it could be exciting yeah well i know what happens i'll drop dead Marjorie will have all this money to spend on vacations and find young boys to take her on a trip. That's right. I'll go too. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, we had, uh, we had good movies, bad movies. We did that already. Um, I just, you know, just. Uh, what else is happening? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what, what's getting to me? I'll have to touch. I have, I have a, a current event. Huh? Okay. We had two earthquakes Thursday night and one last night in my town. You're wow. In Atlanta? In, in Atlanta? Wow. In Sugar Hill slash Beefer, Georgia. Okay. That's what wow. they so what, how, how much of a shake was it? 2.3. Oh, that's. Oh. Oh, that's a pussy quake. I heard how was that? I heard just Mar Marjorie Taylor Green dropped her dumbbells at the, the <laughs> No, but really for real, y'all. It on Thursday at like eleven something, like eleven fifteen, I just gone to bed. It was like a really loud boom and like my house shook. Yeah. Like the windows shook. And I thought, did somebody just crash into something like a or you know, or did something explode? Was there an explosion? Like, yeah, across? yeah. And I thought about looking on Facebook. And I thought that's probably what it was. Yeah, yeah. I saw it, it, it like feels, maybe sit feels, up in bed. Feels like that. somebody hits you. You know, I mean, it's it's yeah. It uh, sounded like somebody hit the house. And so then I thought about it's too soon to look on Facebook. No, I mean, and then apparently it happened again, like at one thirty or something. That's and then an the next day, yeah. yeah. So the next day, my coworker came in, and she lives kind of near me but she said oh did you feel the earthquake last night i said that's what it was <laughs> she said it really wow. was and then the same thing happened last night the same sound and the house shook and i was like no way no way went on you know social media started looking and somebody posted a screenshot of the webs the official website and said another one was reported like yeah, there be an earthquake this year in new york yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. I texted, my, you know, my daughter was saying how she was mad that she didn't feel either one of them. So wow. I was texting with her and my other daughter saying, okay, now I've had one, you've had one, now Sydney has to have one in Texas. <laughs> there have been two near no, here no. this year. Well, you look yeah, no. you see, but what is it, uh, do, does anybody know, I, I bet I bet Andrew knows, uh, what is the thing with the Richter scale, like every time you go up a point, it's how much more than a point lower? 
That's a Charlie it's, question more than an Andrew question. Yeah, it's exponential. It's, uh, if you got one point, it's 10 times as strong. One tenth of a point. 100 times as strong. No, 10x right. per point. One point is 100 times as strong. 10. Okay. 10. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Each, each it, point multiplied by 10. Now, we're not talking, like you say, it's a 4.1. So is the next one 4.2 a, a point? No, four no it's ten, that's 10 times, 10 times more energy. I believe per no, four ten, five, per five ten, is ten times wait more. A minute, per tenth of a point or per point? I'm looking at it right now. Here, let's see. Oh, okay. Because we know. had, I mean, the, my earthquake. I call it my earthquake, the Loma Prieta, which took place um, back in what uh, was it? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Uh, Loma Prieta yeah. was yeah, uh, a six point nine. Uh, so when you think about your 2.1 or whatever, and go to a 6.9, you got to imagine what we went through. Mm -hmm. right. Each whole, each whole number, each whole number increase in magnitude represents a tenfold increase right. in amplitude. So every point two is a double of the amount of energy released. So, so three point four. So if she if she had a 2.1, if it suddenly were a 3.1, that would be ten times more. Yes. 10 times more. Okay. Yeah. So really what we had with the Loma Prieta was like maybe 40 times more than she had. Yeah. We um, was 7.9. 6.9. 6.9. 6.9. Yeah. I thought we had I think I heard it uh, that some people uh, said that it was a reset at being a, a 6. Point, uh, uh, excuse me, 6. Uh, 2. Uh, 7.2. 7. 7.1. I think I'd heard too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I remember. I remember that day distinctly. I just got home from work, and oh, uh, who, could, was, who could forget it? Yeah, seventy miles from the epicenter, and uh, I was almost thrown to the ground. You know, wow. and uh, I could see the, the the sound wall by the freeway buckling and moving and whatever. And then I all the power was out, of course. So we, you know, I got on the radio on my car, hearing that the Bay Bridge had collapsed and things like that. It's like holy shit. That was so horrible. You sure it wasn't yeah. just bad shrimp from the closed red lobster you ate? Well, I, uh, I think yeah. it, might, it might have been. Did you see where John Oliver yes. pulled out a red lobster? Well, yeah. They, they were uh, putting all their stuff up for sale, so he bought out an entire red lobster. Uh, and he donated well, all the stuff, and then some guy complained that he wanted to buy it for his business locally. So he, he ended wanted, up buying he, the equipment. It's a bakery. And no, if the no, guy had yeah, to bake, but what he wanted to buy were some ovens. Was a stove, an I think. oven, and a, and a and a cooktop. Oven, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if if the guy wants them for free, he has to make pastries that look like John Oliver and sell them. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> I think a rap artist too that did the same thing, and I don't know if it was in Atlanta, an Atlanta one, uh, maybe Little John or somebody went and like bought like everybody dinner like just bought a whole like five grand worth of food i don't know no, but trying... this wasn't this wasn't buying people uh, yeah not buying it so you can have people eat there they were going out of business and they were selling yeah. all the things in the where, the red lobster so he bought everything in the red lobster booze i mean it was tables it was booths it was yeah. equipment yeah. i'm googling this because i know so funny he donated all that stuff too to charity. Well, by the way, yeah. you want to feel sorry for uh, John Oliver. He just fired his agent. Oh, because they made a new deal with uh, HBO, where they signed him up for another three years, and his agents didn't get him a raise. Oh. Oh. And he's mad because now he's stuck with HBO for three years at this money. Do you know how much money he makes? I'm afraid to ask. A million dollars an episode, which is Ooh. essentially thirty million dollars a year. That's what right. I get paid per episode, but I don't do any episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't do any episodes, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't don't, was, don't tell it was, anybody. It was Flava Flav that bought oh. the entire oh. menu attempt to save Red Lobster. To save Red Lobster. Yeah, he's like he. He flavor flavor the rapper. He went to Red Lobster location and ordered every menu item in one visit. 
Did you, <laughs> anybody here been to a Red Lobster? Uh, I years. Years. I think <laughs> I was once. And there was a reason why I never went back. Yeah, yeah. I know people who love that place. They, that's, yeah. the, that's the first seafood restaurant I remember going to as a kid. Okay. Like that was a treat to go. Okay, to I I got to give you my. We we should do is start fessing up here about places you've eaten that really people that, give you a bad time when you say you ate there. <laughs> um, my favorite, beyond a doubt, and I went there over and over again. Took. People have to dinner there and everything. Red, uh, not Red Lobster, um, um, Outback. Outback. Oh, Outback. I love Outback. Oh, yeah, I go there all the time. See? Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not the only one, huh? Because Marjorie, when I told her, let's go to an Outback, she went, I won't go there. <laughs> you, If you go for nothing more, the Blooming Onion is Yeah. Right. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Get a Blooming Onion. Huh? Yeah, get you a lemon onion. Yeah, lemon yeah. onion. Blooming. It's a, apparently, apparently, that's the most it's basically a heart attack on the plate. Yes, yeah, yeah. the most calories and salt and whatever you can have in any single dish in the yeah. United States. Yeah. What the blooming onion? Blooming onion. Yeah. 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 Onions. It's got like onions don't have carbohydrates in them. But yeah. What they put on it. Yeah. It's <laughs> they, all the breading and the grease. Bread it and put it in the oil. That kind of ruins it. I met the guy who invented the device that they cut the onion with to make the blooming onion at a trade show years ago. Really? He it said, had, he to, said it had to cut this... the onion, had to cut the onion and let it just fall to the sides. Or okay, what? It, you set the onion on it and it has a blade that, that, that slices it and flowers it out. And then it gets dipped in batter and thrown in the thing. He said that the, he's, when it comes to margins, he turns a 50 cent onion into a $12 appetizer and people love him for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, that's what they cost. Yeah, yeah. It's a the device is really just a manual press, and now rest all restaurants all over the place use them. They just Paula, did you ever go to an Outback? No, but I'm impressed with the great American know-how. I mean, that's amazing <laughs> about that profit and yeah. what they did to, 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 to get it. Yeah, I was actually at uh, once, and um, my complaint about the blooming onion is that it's indigestible. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's indigestible. It's, indi it's indigestible. I, uh, if you wanted to have that, why not just have onion rings one at a time? Because because this is because a it's not onion. a blooming onion. You peel off the petals yeah. and you, <laughs> it's like a like flower petals you pull off. It's yeah, you know, it's like an artichoke, you know. Where you, I never could understand an artichoke. Okay, yeah. uh, my mother always used to make artichokes, and so of course I was forced to eat them. And you each leaf, and you just kind of eat the end of it and finally you get down to the the heart of it and it's disgusting <laughs> you know you i like just don't understand artichoke preserved? huh you don't like the preserved art artichoke hearts in the salad no oh, they're good oh, they're, they're, those i like really do you yeah. like artichokes marjorie sometimes in a salad when i was a kid i called them artichokes how about heart of palm do you like that Heart of Palm? Isn't that an artichoke center? No, it's a white center of a special palm that's grown in South America. For oh, really? Heart of Palm? I've never had Heart of Palm. It, it, it's good. I've had Coup de Gras. Yeah. I haven't had Heart of Palm. <laughs> Have you? Coup d'etat you've had? <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody, I'm going to leave. I've got to go. I'll talk to you on the week. got to go. Do have okay. Fun. Go on. Teach me. Teach people to get healthy. Hey, hold oh, yeah. on, I'm going to put it on the report. Hey, thanks. See you next week. You know. <laughs> Have a great week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, if anybody wants to call, we have room for one more. Uh, <laughs> Don't do that. You never know what you might get. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we know what we'll get. Yeah. Uh, here's a good question, though. Foods that you hated as a kid, right? You hated it as a kid, but as you got older, you loved it. Mm. Broccoli was for me. I never enjoyed it until I was in my 20s. Yeah. You know, just vegetables in general. My mother used to boil yeah. them until they were absolute mush. Yeah. See, that, that's the thing. It's, it's, uh, um, my, my mom, bless her heart, um, was not a great cook. 
So I discovered a whole lot of things that, uh, as an adult that, that uh, I thought were terrible as a, as a kid because, like fish, she would make fish, she would boil the hell out of it or whatever she would do with it, but yeah. I love fish now. I, would, I wouldn't eat a lobster till I was 30, and then I went crazy for it. Then he yeah. discovered red lobster. I also, <laughs> yeah, I also didn't like clams, and it was 50 when I finally got to like clams. Oh, I love clams. Yeah, I love clams. I think, I think raw oysters is mine. I didn't like them when I was younger. Oysters. There's another one. None of those things could you get me to eat when I was younger, you know? And all of a sudden, you know, I have one and uh, not bad. Not bad. I'll tell you what I had. Um, I went over to somebody's house for dinner and they didn't tell me what they're serving for dinner. Uh, and I think I went with my then wife. I can't remember which one that was. I went with my then wife and she knew what they were going to cook. But she didn't tell me either because, and then they made sure it was the only thing they were serving for dinner. So I'd have to eat it. Snails. Mm, I love escargot. Okay, now so let me I... ask you a question. Now, I, I don't mind eating escargot. Give me some escargot, I'll eat them. All right. But what's good about escargot? The garlic and the butter. Yes, the well, I, yes. All I've got to yes. do is put garlic and butter in a bowl and uh, fry it up a little bit and just eat the garlic and the onion. It, because there's no taste to a goddamn snail. That's true. You could say that about clams, though, too. They have a little yeah. flavor. And oysters. There's all this yeah. sauce and stuff. Well, oysters, on. oysters. Um, you, you, what, what do I put on them? I don't put much on them. Just a little uh, uh, lemon, you know. Hot sauce. Uh, huh? Hot sauce. Lemon and hot sauce. Uh, lemon and hot sauce. I don't want. I wouldn't want to ruin a good oyster with hot sauce. <laughs> you know. But oysters, I I never could eat an oyster, and then all of a sudden, I I enjoyed oysters. You know, couldn't you couldn't stop me from getting them. Yeah. You know? By the way, you know what kind of noise annoys an oyster. <laughs> What? Please pray tell. Tell us. Huh? Tell us. Well, I'll be happy to tell you. A noisy noise annoys an oyster. <laughs> is that a pearl of wisdom? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, oh. He is too sharp. Oh, my goodness. That joke is doing the same thing that pearls, the uh, uh, reason pearls exist. They get irritated. Yes. <laughs> but... Uh, I think we should climb up on this subject and move on. <laughs> yeah. But I know I was, uh, I, I uh, um, you know, certain foods that you had wouldn't eat when you were a kid. Just couldn't stand. Were terrific. You know, when you, when you got older and I, I've never been able to figure that one out, but it, you would think you would actually, your taste buds would get worse as you get older, but they actually probably get more sensitive. Hey, Alex, I want to ask you a question. I'm going to tell you why first. YouTube all of a sudden starts suggesting things that I've never watched before. And mm -hmm. I, it, it suggested that I watch the killer bee guy, these guys down in Arizona that eradicate killer bees from hives. And it's the scariest thing you ever saw in your life. If you saw mm -hmm. the thing, it would take your breath away. I'm curious with other people here, based on what you watch, what out of the blue thing does YouTube decide to suggest? Oh, we, we have something you watch watch carpet something, carpet I know you watch carpet cleaning. Carpet right? cleaning. Right. That's what carpet brought it up. No. Carpet. And, yes. and by oh, the way, if oh, you've, you've never, never watched the carpet cleaning on YouTube? Oh, just put yeah. in carpet cleaning. They will come up with hundreds of them. These are people who go out, I don't know, they go to the, the dump or something like that. And they no, get a place where they had floods or something like that. They get yeah. their carpet. And, bring, and they, they bring this carpet in and they just start cleaning it and cleaning it and cleaning it and cleaning it until finally, you know, and if you're lucky, there's a really nice pattern under all that mud. And somehow I had some guests over to the house. And we were just sitting there fascinated watching the, the cleaning of these carpets. There's something very soothing about it. It sounds crazy, but you're right. I've seen those. But the Killer Bee one, if you knew what was really going on with those things in the country, drive you crazy. I'm just curious who else gets weird suggestions that have nothing to well, do with what happens is watched. it's based on stuff you've already watched. Exactly. Watched. So what, what, well, what, well, so they might, well, so, no, so they might have put he might have gotten one for killer bees just out of a clear blue sky and then he watched it 
And now everything you get are for killer bees, right? It's it, hundreds and hundreds of videos from these guys. And yeah. they're actually crazy to watch. I mean, it's it's so What do scary. they do with the killer bees? So in, in this, killer bees were formed in like 1950s in Brazil. Yeah. And they've, they've migrated up. Remember back in the 70s, that movie, The Swarm? Yeah. yeah. They're actually in the country. There are no native hives of, because, well, there's no uh, honeybees in the U.S., are not native anyhow they were brought in from europe there were no honeybees here but now the killer bees are these africanized violent bees and they're they're they they get it the guys get a call uh, there's three dead horses in my in my yard there's a beehive can you come or wow and and they come out and when they get near the hive they're wearing these bee suits and you can't hear them over the noise as they're right, who are wearing the bee or, suits the the, the killer the bee, the bee killers <laughs> they're exterminators <laughs> who kill killer bees yeah, it sounds ridiculous. I challenge really you to watch it and not be out of breath by the end of a video. Wow. Are they long? Some of them are an hour plus, but some of them are well, shorter. Well, let's look up Killer Bees, Marjorie. Don't Killer Bee Guy. I'm enjoying Letterman. Let me just stay with that. <laughs> he, he never <laughs> watched David it. Letterman. It's, it's, a, it's one of the episodes of uh, Stupid Pet Tricks. I love Stupid <laughs> Pet Tricks. <laughs> but well, with bees. The thing is, she never watched David Letterman. Never. She, she said she went to bed too early. That was her excuse. Oh, yeah. But who who here had never watched David Letterman? See? Not never. Yeah. Where's sure. our Canadian friend? The so now guy? there are all these Letterman clips on, on YouTube. She will watch them for hours upon hours. They're great. You have to They're agree. Dave, Dave was maybe the best of all time, right? He was. I, I think I'm Team Carson, to be honest with you. I'm You're team Jimmy Carson. No, I'm, I'm right. Team Letterman. I'm Team Letterman. I mean, I, I always. One night, I I was out of work for a time, and it was late at night, and I watched De, uh, Johnny Carson, and I watched him, and I said, "This guy is terrific." You know, he he's really a master of what he does. But then along came Letterman, and Letterman really set the bar. Mm. You know, he did. He really set the bar. But last night I got stuck on um, Turner Classic Movies because they had a documentary that's two and a half hours long on Ennio Morricone, the guy who did the music for all the Sergio Leone movies, among others, and is probably the greatest movie music composer of all time. I mean, it, he's his, his sense of combining a classical sense with a pop sense was amazing and it was his whole career on how he originally was doing uh, um, records for RCA in Italy and became very big in that and how he went on to do movies and the little fact that I never knew and I don't think any of you know you all know who Sergio Leone is right yeah you, you know all the all the Clint Eastwood yeah West yeah, spaghetti West. Western. yeah 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 Ennio Marconi did all the music for his movies. Yeah. You know why? They went to grade school together. Ah, really? They were in the same class. Yes. Wow. Isn't that an amazing little factoid? Because you yeah. always associate Leone movies with Ennio Marconi's. Yeah. Movies, but you never. I got soundtracks you know. to all those movies. Yeah, yeah but you, you never came to think that they knew each other prior to that. No, I didn't know and that no. In fact, when they met up finally, when he was asked to go talk to Leone, they just at that point remembered they had gone to school together. Prior to that, they had forgotten completely. Yeah, so I found that kind of wild. It's, ama it's amazing to think about what music does for a movie. Well, yeah. What he did for them for films was amazing, it's like like John Williams and and uh, yeah, yeah but I think even John Williams would agree that Morricone was the best, literally most, the best, most prolific he, these he days. He was Danny like Oman. no other music that anybody did for movies. It came out of a, a classical background, but also a background of one of the things he used to do is he had a group of musicians that played weird instruments that they had made up themselves, like tin cans and things like that. And he came out of this whole school of, of trying to come up with original stuff, and his scores were just, you know, you, you go watch, listen, watch the movie Once Upon a Time in America. Try to imagine that movie without his score. 
Is that his? That's right. That's his score, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. It, oh, it's a great movie. Have you listened to the soundtracks from Danny Elfman, the guy that used to be in Oingo Boingo? Elfman's very good. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's the most prolific these days. He's prolific. But when you talk about great and unusual, and I got to tell you, I don't know. They asked him in this documentary, how many movies have you scored? He couldn't give you a number. He said, it's got to be over 300. You know, he just, anybody asked him to score a movie, he score a movie. Yeah. I, can, I, my friend, um, uh, what's his name, the comedian, uh, was on Saturday Night Live. Um, oh God, oh God, I'm forgetting stuff. Uh, but he he had a hey, show. Uh, hmm. Wow. Well, you know, he, he used to play. He was a uh, uh, guy. He he invented. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, he. Um, it was uh, I had him on here doing an interview and um, he was doing a TV show on I think it was uh, at prime or, or oh no no it was it was in Netflix and for the last episode he needed music and he decided to hire Ennio Morricone to do it you mean like Dana Carvey maybe no not Dana Carvey <laughs> I'm trying everybody, to think of who you're... everybody give the kids about this guy gives him a bad time. Family Guy always used to joke about him. Uh, oh, oh, Norm Macdonald, Alex Bennett, oh, not Norm Macdonald, Dan Aykroyd, uh, Bill Murray. I don't know. No, that's too early. That's too There's early. There's a few on the right. Joe Piscopo. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Eddie Murphy. I don't know. <laughs> I think this was the guy that made copies or something. Um, oh, oh, Adam uh, Sandler? Sandler? Adam, yeah, Adam no, Sandler. not Adam Sandler. No, no. Oh, the other oh. guy. The, he's the he's other in guy. all the Adam Sandler movies. The one yeah. guy who keeps getting kicked off the stage. Uh, Schneider, Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider. That's, oh, that's it. it. Anyway, Jeez. Rob went out and hired Dude. Neil Morricone to do the music for his final episode, for final scene in the episode. And it was, it, you listen to it and you go, all of a sudden, this dumbass comedy, well, it wasn't a bad show, but this dumbass comedy is ending in a poignant way. And the music is Ennio Marconi. He actually flew to Europe, went to Prague to the symphony orchestra that was doing it. And Marconi had, had written it, but didn't show up to conduct it. Uh, but I mean, his music was just, it, you just sit there and you go, where did this come from? You know, it, and and it literally makes films that otherwise, you know, wouldn't have been as great as they were. So. And and there has to be somebody that fits the music to the action as well. And that's that's yeah. like a, a genius thing all by itself. Yeah, the but he found, he found different modalities to do it with. You know, he would put a certain kind of music to a certain kind of scene where you wouldn't think it would work, and it absolutely works, you know. Uh, I first really got to appreciate him because I love the movie Bugsy, and he did the music for Bugsy. He also did the music for The Untouchables, which I had completely forgotten. Um, and uh, there was a film called Cinema Paradiso he did the music for, and that music is just breathtaking. Just breathtaking. But anyway, so anyway, if you get to see the documentary, it's going away. It's on Turner Classic Movies, but it's only up till the 16th. It is, and it's long, and but to see the guy's history, and, uh, you know, and he finally, after it, uh, 92 or something like that, finally won an Academy Award after being nominated six times. Yeah. What did he win it for? He won it for The Hateful Eight. Oh, yeah, but uh, he uh, yeah he was nominated six times for movies where he should have absolutely won, and some dopey film won, you know. Uh, there was this one uh, uh, music a picture about a musician, and uh, the person who won the award was the guy who orchestrated the already existent music, and that made him kind of mad. Because he said, you know, he did a nice job of it, but he didn't write any music for the film. This should only be an award for people who wrote music for the film. 
not took existing music and orchestrated it. But it's a great documentary. And I was up till, I don't know, 2.30 in the morning watching the damn thing. And I had to speed through a little bit of it to not have to spend the whole two and a half hours watching it. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here, and it's been a night. Not, 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 yes, Andrew. No, I got I got to run. I got to be. Oh well, you well you can hold it until I say goodbye to you because I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. I'm, I'm late. Have a great one, everybody. Goodbye, Bye. Andrew. See you later, Bye, Andrew. Andrew. Okay, now uh, let's say goodbye to everybody else. I'm glad he's gone, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul, Paula, thank you so much. Good to have you here. Marjorie, did you turn the oven on? Yes, I did. See? Okay. Because um, I'm going to go cook that 100-inch steak that I've got. To cook. Um, uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Charlene, for being here. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, Len, always a pleasure. And, of course, the lovely and attractive uh, uh, Charlie Wallace. Oh. Or I <laughs> like to call him Charlie Fortos. <laughs> that, you only have four left, right? That's right. I only got four left. He doesn't look Italian, but all right. Well. <laughs> His only problem is he keeps wanting to go in this direction. <laughs> I lean to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Some anyway. of my best friends do. <laughs> and finally, we're going to sign off today with the wonderful uh, uh, approbation by Mr. Uh, Edward Berger, who says... That's all, folks. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see bye, you later. Guys. See you next week. Excellent. Enjoy your steak. Okay, bye. <laughs>